On this show, you'll find inspiration, motivation, and advice from experts, as well as valuable tips on how to get started or improve your business. Let's dive into how you can begin and grow your wisdom business. Inspiring others looks different for everyone. How will you inspire? Welcome to the Wise Dome Podcast and today we're chatting with Caroline. Caroline, welcome to our podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for this chat. Uh, it's, uh, I, I want to know more about you. So what is it that you do? Why is it that you do what you do? Yeah. So what I do primarily is help business owners understand how they can create more impact with their business without necessarily having to do more. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've really noticed for a lot of us is that we can end up in a situation where how much we can do impacts how much we can actually create in terms of, you know, the impact that we want to create on the world, the income that we want to bring in through our business. And so I started kind of went on this bit of a journey to figure out, okay, So if I don't have any more capacity time-wise, how can I be working smarter, not harder? And it led me down this very, you know, very interesting journey. We can get into more of that. But where it's landed me is really helping business owners understand their own individual unique genius and energetics for what they are doing. And I look at that through the lens of the system of human design Mm -hmm. uh, to really allow us to basically go, okay, this is how I operate energetically, yeah. optimally. This is this is what's going on underneath the surface and bringing that into our business and going, okay, cool. Awesome. We have this amazing business. How can I take these, you know, principles and understandings of myself and basically bring myself in so that I'm doing, you know, all the roles that are right for me. I am bringing team into the roles that are right for them and all of us can kind of work together and collaborate together. How can I show up in a way that feels really aligned and easeful for me? What offers really make sense for me to have in my business? So it's really basically often taking businesses that have already had some success and then saying, okay, great, to get to the next level, these are the things that we're potentially going to need to change. And, you know, often we look at the strategy piece and I kind of come in and say, okay, yep, awesome. I love the strategy piece. I love talking strategy, but also what's going on with your energy? How's your mindset? How's your nervous system? Like how are all the pieces that are you that ultimately support the business? So, yeah. Sorry, That's long-winded, cool. long-winded no, 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 answer to my question. I love human design and I don't understand it enough to talk about it, but I love the whole, you know, concept of well, not so much concept, but I love the whole thing about, you know, human design and the energies and so forth and, yeah. and finding, you know, we all have our genius zone and some people are like, well, I don't know what my genius zone is, but this is another way of finding it, isn't it? Sort of like yes. what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, go out there and get someone else who can do that job for exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's almost the way I explain it to people is it's, it's pretty much just a blueprint. So it's a blueprint. And when someone like me knows how to read that blueprint, we can basically say, okay, these are the things that you are naturally good at. These are the ways that are naturally going to work for you to work. And so it's like, okay, how can we bring that into what you are already doing? Or for some of my clients, they're early in business and it's like, let's build it like that from the ground up. I mean, I love to do that because then we don't have to like realign later. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah, we're not kind of redoing it. But yeah, it's basically just a blueprint that gives you this really great map to explore from and experiment with within life in general, but business. And I have to ask, what is the name of this program that you support with? Yeah, so I have two programs currently. So I have a group program called The Experiment yep. because in human design, we understand that everything is an experiment. So we learn something about our design and then we take that and we experiment it with, in, you know, with it in our life. And so I took that concept and applied it to business. Yeah. So I have my group program and then I have one-to-one mentoring where I work with people on a more one-to-one bespoke kind of basis to go through their business and do any designing or realigning for their specific business. So that's kind of the two options uh, that I have. And the experiment is a really great 
way to go because people basically go through each business unit uh, within their business and learn about that business unit related back to their design. And then they go and experiment and play around and see what is going to work for them. So it's super fun. I, I I absolutely love doing it. You can probably tell. <laughs> I, I, but I love it. Hey, you've got to have a passion for what you do. Otherwise, longevity ain't there. How yes. did you get into it? How did you get into this? Yeah. So I had a 15-year career in healthcare mm-hmm. and I loved helping people. Yeah. But after 15 years, I was burned out. I was completely burned out. Uh, it happened to coincide with 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had some personal health issues and obviously we went into um, the pandemic and I had started a business in the education space around something that I was super passionate about, which was actually children with food allergies because we had a food allergy child of our own. Mm -hmm. I had a background with a lot of education within my role in health. Mm -hmm. And so I had basically taken that and built a business around that, that I was running on the side as well as my 40 hour plus week in healthcare. And eventually in 2019, 2020, I was like, I'm totally burned out. I'm not feeling the passion for anything. It's time to make a shift. And so I made a shift in my business and moved across to working more in social media and video and the strategy space, because that was the skills that I had really learned and loved. And As I went on that journey, I basically realized that I needed to find a way to understand myself better so that I didn't just recreate burnout (laughs) in my business like I'd created in everything else. And human design came into my world in 2020. And right from the get-go, I was like, okay, this is a really interesting way to kind of have a blueprint and explore and experiment with how I can do this better. And I've been on a journey with that. It was a personal journey. And then I started to bring that into the work I was doing with my clients. And then the more I went deep into human design, the more people followed me down the rabbit hole (laughs) and it kind of unfolded. So it's been like this beautiful journey where I have basically gone on the journey and then taken people with, with me on the journey as well. And it's really, I can see like my own personal growth that journey has really followed my business journey. And so now for the last couple of years, this is firmly where I've had my feet and I love it. So. Well, that's a perfect segue because I was literally going to ask you the next question was, you know, how have you personally grown? Yes. This journey? <laughs> yes. Uh, like so, so very much. Like I really think the, the timing and the transition mm. out of a career across into business kind of created that first leap there because, you know, it was locked down and (laughs) (laughs) yeah, I I basically had to sink or swim and we, we had personal circumstances. We had so many things going on and it was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I have to make this work. Like I, I have to make this work. And I very quickly realized that my business was only going to grow to the level that I was growing. And so I've been really committed along the way to doing that. And I've done a lot of training and a lot of work um, through that time to really develop myself and understand myself. And I think that is so, so key to longevity when it comes to business growth, because we have to have that solid foundation underneath us to support us to be able to create you know keep taking calculated risks and you know leaping and creating our parachute on the way down because business has those aspects to it so I definitely came in very underprepared and it's been a massive you know growth we all feel like that we never feel like totally hence the you know procrastination that always sits there with a lot of us Yes. You, like, you know, when you decided to go into like this field and actually, like you said, people started coming on this journey with you and mm-hmm. you translated that in a way where you went, you know, I'm going to help people with this. And mm. how did you work out? Now, this is going to the direction of how you share your knowledge. So how mm-hmm. do you work out the best form to support people, especially when it came to human design? Because that is something that is very almost one-on-one or face-to-face. Yeah. So how did you do that during the whole COVID period? Yeah. So I think I, I already 
had a background in a lot of public speaking and a lot of presenting. And so I, right from the start, I wanted that to be part of my business. And so I started by basically presenting human design information to people Mm -hmm. in a way. And one of the things that people say to me is the way that you present it, it's like, it makes sense of the system. And then I feel like I know how I could actually practically use yeah. it. Yeah. And it's really interesting because in your design, there is actually keys, like little clues to mm-hmm. the way that you're designed to share information with people. Uh-huh. And yeah. And so I, as I learned about that and leaned into that, it became even more natural. And For me, those two key areas are that I share the practical solutions that people need based in like research and knowledge. And so that really was what I was doing kind of by accident. And then I realized that it actually was energetically aligned, of course. And so I lent into that more. And I think one of the things that I have really um, developed is a way to share that information in a group format. Mm-hmm. but but so that people can actually then take that and go on their own kind of exploration and journey and be supported through that process. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting because traditionally, yes, human design has always been like a, a one-to-one process and mm-hmm. I'm seeing more and more people who are putting it into a format where it can be more one-to-many. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it always made sense for it to be one to many because I had really big goals of the number of people that I wanted to impact and I yeah. wouldn't have been able to do that one to one and I yeah. <laughs> didn't want to be working 60 hours a week because yeah. I've been there done that so yeah. <laughs> it was it was finding a way so really it started off sort of doing workshops and one to one work mm. and I did that for quite a while and until I kind of figured out my my system and my process and my framework and then I took it into a group program. Mm-hmm. And I think that really helped because I, I went through those processes and I worked with so many people. I knew what the key themes were going to be for people. And so then we could approach it from that perspective when it came to working in the group. And I still have um, face-to-face components within the group as well. And the options for people to upgrade and do one-to-one because I do love doing one-to-one. Yeah. Um, but I also love creating really, really great training environments as well. So that's mm. that's super fun to do that too. Yeah. Mm. Well, you certainly have a passion for it because you can hear it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, but I love, you know, and it, when you better understand what works well for you, you can really emphasize that skill yes. talent and I think that's great you know you helping businesses to recognize that and helping them to sort of establish and, and be more efficient I guess in a sense as well with how they run their businesses that's that's so yeah. important how long does your program you know last for when you work with people like do they you know there are ways that they can return and so forth as well yeah so this is that's such an it's such an interesting question because this is something we've been kind of streamlining in the back end and really thinking about going forward Mm. and so my group program is six months because it takes time to learn experiment and realign along the way yeah particularly when a lot of it is self-directed with support When I work with people in a one-to-one capacity, it depends on the stage of business. Early on in business, because I do a lot of strategy and business building with them, we tend to work for longer together. So it might be sort of a six-month period. With my clients with much more established businesses, it's actually generally a shorter process. So normally we'll spend one to two months together and we will basically go through and map the energetics of the CEO. That's generally who I'm working with. Yep. And then we, I have a process where we actually go through and map the energetics of the team because quite often, number one, we want the CEO to really only be doing what they're good at. Mm-hmm. We don't want them to be the bottleneck of everything else. Yeah. And with all the love in the world, there's a lot of CEOs out there that are bottlenecking other things yeah. because they're holding too much responsibility 
or they don't have someone appropriate to delegate things to. So it's kind of a process of getting that individual far more aligned, but then we do actually go in and dive into the team. We look at the human design blueprints of the team and how the team comes together because Uh often what we find is that people have the right people, Mm -hmm. but they have them in the wrong places. They have the wrong responsibilities. And human design actually literally goes down to the nitty gritty of different business units and whether someone is designed to have leadership in that business unit or responsibility in that business unit or be part of the team to build that business unit. And so we can actually map a team right down to the nitty gritty of, okay, you're, say, for example, currently in charge of PR, but there's actually someone on the team that has much stronger numbers for PR. And so we can actually kind of play around with the team in the background and just change some of the structures to ultimately get way better productivity, which is always the key sort of marker that we're looking for. And generally the CEO brings me in because they want time back, that they want freedom. They got into business because they wanted freedom and then they realized that they just like business themselves into a box. And so that's generally the the KPI that they're looking for is yeah. can you get me my time back? Yeah. And I'm looking for how can we also make the team more productive? So depending on the stage of business, it can look different. But yeah, yeah but really I love having the opportunity to be like, okay, tell me all about what's going on mm. and here's a plan that we can basically execute that's specific to you. Wow. And how, mm. how does this, and look, I, I don't know the name of it, um, but you know how there's other systems out there that, you know, corporates use and so forth. Where yes. That, oh, what's the initials? What's it called? Like um, a um, Myers-Briggs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How does it differentiate from that? Yeah. So this is so interesting. So I love, like, I, I have done training in Myers-Briggs. I know a fair bit about the DISC profile as well, which is yeah. another really common one that's used. Yeah. So the biggest difference between human design and that is that human design is based off of the time, date, and place that you were born. Mm. So you are not answering a series of questions that you might answer differently today or differently contextually. Your blueprint is based off of when you were born and where. So there's no subjectiveness to the information that we get back through through the chart, which I think is probably an upside to the system yep. because I know even for myself, it can depend on, you know, it can depend on the way that you answer the questions for a disc profile as to exactly where the disc falls. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this one is done based, you know, on where you're born and the time that you're born. Mm-hmm. And that gives us the chart. There's no leeway in the chart. The chart is as you were born. Yeah, yeah. And then we can, in, yeah, then we interpret based off, off the, of the chart from yeah. there. So I guess that's probably, for me, I see that as an upside because it doesn't have that subjectivity. Yeah. Um, but I think all those systems are amazing because I think anything <laughs> that helps us to understand ourselves and other people better makes life better. And it definitely makes business better. So. Yeah. I'd yeah. love to see, like, you know, you, you do a comparison, like, to someone. Yeah. Subjective is the that. word, isn't it? Because you could be, and, you know, we hear this very often, you know, the whole imposter syndrome thing. Yeah. We might be thinking of ourselves in a certain way when in actual yes. fact it's not. And this, this is exactly what happened to me. For 2020, I ran my my business um, courses and coaching following a very kind of common model you know, business model. Mm. And about six months in, I was super, super burned out from the business model. And I honestly thought there was something wrong with me. I was like, there must be something wrong with me. This like, it doesn't seem to be sustainable for me. I'm watching all these other people that seem to be able to do it exponentially. What is going on? And actually that was around the time that I learned about my design and discovered that I actually was completely energetically different to most of those coaches that were succeeding with that particular business model. Ah. And I actually didn't have the energy for that business model. And when I shifted business models in the way that I do things, Mm. I was able to have the success without the burnout. So that's definitely something that human design gave me very, very early on was an explanation as to why um, I just didn't have long-term sustainable energy available for projects in the way that some people do. And that that's actually part of my superpower is that I am super efficient in a short period of time yeah. and then designed to rest. 
Yeah. Um, my t- that my human design type is literally designed like that. Whereas other people have really great long term sustained energy for the things that they love. That that's not me, and there's nothing wrong with me. It's just the way that I was designed, and so it was just about finding a way to make that work. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in touch with Caroline after this. Uh, <laughs> do it. But it's it's amazing stuff. I, I really think you know the more we learn about ourselves and understand ourselves, the better because you know. And look, it comes down to the very simple line that my mum has always taught me: you have to love yourself before you love anyone else. You have to understand yourself. Yes. So yes. it's, yeah, it's so, so important. What's the biggest challenge that you've come across through this whole journey? I think the biggest challenge for me has been really ensuring that every step of the way I keep connected yeah. to the whole reason that I made the decision to move into business. Right. And the reasoning behind that truly when it came down to it was that I wanted to still be able to impact people, yep. but I wanted to be able to do it on my own terms. Nice. And so probably the biggest challenge for me over the time has been continuing to bring myself back to what are, what does my own terms actually mean Maybe. right now as my life looks like right now. You know, when I transitioned, my girls were a fair bit younger than they are now. And so, you know, I would, I needed time to support them. I needed flexibility to be with them. Like tomorrow is a really good example at the very, very last minute I needed, I need to take a child somewhere tomorrow because she made it through to the next round for a representative netball competition. And so oh. I, we have to travel Yeah, and Luckily and beautifully, I have a business where I was able to basically say, okay, I'm going to record a few lessons uh, early that I would have delivered live on Friday and put them into the portal. And then I'm going to show up live from the car on Friday and just do the coaching because I want the lessons in the portal to look professional, but I'm happy to do the coaching from the car. Yeah. So I'll coach from the car, she'll trial for the for the netball team and so it was that whole piece of just continuously checking back, you know, like, why am I doing this? Yeah. What is it that I want to achieve? What's my mission for like my bigger mission, but also like my personal mission, my family mission, and just continuing to like check back in and be like, okay, like, how are we traveling with that? How is this feeling? What do I need to like reorganize yeah. to keep myself you know, on track for what I actually am doing and why I'm actually here rather than just creating a job out of my business. God, you're yeah. creating great segues for me because the next question <laughs> for you awesome. is what legacy are you looking to leave? Yeah. Personally, business. This is a really, yeah, this is a really great question. I think the legacy that I am looking to leave is for people to understand that business is a beautiful way to create opportunities for ourselves and for other people. And it is often the opportunity to have the freedom and the flexibility that we want in our life. And so I want everyone to know that it's actually possible for them to create that in a way that is on their terms. And I want my children to know that they're probably going to have jobs that we haven't even thought about right now oh, because gosh. I have a job that we <laughs> hadn't thought about when I left school. So I just want them to know that there's so much opportunity mm. and that business is often the vehicle for that innovation and change and opportunity. And it it can be something that fits beautifully into your life rather than trying to jam your life into your it's business. Something else. Exactly. I have to say that this conversation has been bloody awesome. I've loved chatting to you. Do you have any offer that you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, so I'm going to invite the audience to grab my free PDF guide. It's a really, really great place to get started, particularly if you're like, what is human design? Or you're like, yes, I have kind of been aware of the system, but I'm not really sure what to do with it. This guide is perfect for that. So it basically takes you through five ways that you can use your human design to grow and scale your business today. Uh, it will help you decipher your chart, understand the pieces and look at some of the really core areas around your business, communication, money, leadership, et cetera. So you can grab that by going to Caroline Linda with a Y 
lynda.com slash guide. Done. And all the details anyway. Oh my God, Caroline's <laughs> offer will be in our podcast summary below. Be sure to click on the link and don't forget to subscribe. And again, Caroline, thank you so much for your time. It's been lovely chatting to you. Thank you, Nikki. Have an amazing day. Thanks for listening to the Wise Dome podcast. If you enjoyed and have been inspired by this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, do subscribe and please share it with others. Post about us on social media or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me, Nikki Kelly, you can follow me on Instagram at Wise Dome Podcast, W-I-S-E-D-O-M-E Podcast. I'm Nikki Kelly. Thanks again, and we'll catch up next time. Bye.